collective harm, the state's goofy legislative package ignoring monetary payments is disingenuous. California lawmakers need to step up and put a reparations bill for cash payments on the table. The issue of how it is funded, the timeline, or whether it impacts our current budget challenges can be addressed. But we must strike while the iron is hot or the window of opportunity will pass us by. If you agree that it's time for our lawmakers to add a bill enacting cash payments to their lineup, call them at 916-319-3868 and say, if it doesn't include cash, it ain't reparations. That's 916-319-3868. Tell them Cali House sent you. From Bruce's Beach to the California Task Force, the Golden State is a trailblazer when it comes to reparations. The world is watching. We must rise to the historical moment and set a precedent for cash payments along with legislative remedies and policies addressing the systemic badges of slavery and Jim Crow. We must insist on measures significant enough to help close the racial wealth gap. California must stand for cash, and the time for reparations is now. For KBLA Talk 1580, I'm Dominique DePrima. We welcome your comments. Yeah. 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 Ready, 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 ready. Bill from the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Ready, ready. Love, bill from the dirt. It ain't no shortcut home, gotta get what you worth. I'ma send a bill for the verse. If that ain't you spending it perfect, it is less work. I ain't gotta deal with the personal fear and the verse of the year. Cause my n slap. It ain't been close in the year. Y'all see my close in the mirror. Y'all again no cap. That bounce different when the ill in the house with him. He be quiet as a mouse, quiet as a cap. I ain't come to mouth with you. Everything that I'm about different, the amount different to the clout dripping. He be sitting on the couch, chilling with the niggas that was in the house with him. And that figures. Fools rap one pandemic and they swear that they own. They swear that they own. Wanna feel love like this, but you won't feel love like this till you did and you gone. Watch what you say, cause the gang in here. Watch for the snakes if you stay in here. They ask when you start putting haze in the air. I said, bro, it changed me, yeah. Dividends, what the difference is. Independent with the business is. I've been in the gym on my fifth year. Eating rappers have me feeling sick. Drag race at the dealership. Another bag chase, another bad case. Never shoulda, coulda, woulda. Face, last place had a bad taste. But this FCC, dreams come true. When it's up and we up, then it's up. Tough when that check ain't cash. Cause you slept through class. Now you up, but it sucks, so you stuck. I can fillet with the bad. I do the same with my left. It's been stacking the dead, but this shit ain't spade, it's a chance. Fools are at one pandemic and they swear that they own. They swear that they own. Wanna feel love yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, but yeah. they won't feel love like new track. this. That's off of uh, my last EP, No Place Like Home. That's called uh, Swear to God. That's Miles Low. Miles Low, baby. Miles Low Music, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I love that one. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. You doing some things right there. No, I'm trying. I'm a student to the game, man. So I, I'm I'm a true poet, true storyteller, true lyricist, and you know that's 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 me taking the stairs, man. I love that. I mean, since we've been talking about everybody in the industry, everybody's career, including yours, and how you approach it, I love, love, love hearing that. And uh, one thing I know about you, Miles, we've been working together for a minute now, is that you are a creative person. You. You're gonna look at everything through the lens of creativity. You know, how does this feed it? How does it, how is it detriment, detrimental? And where does it fit in the big picture? And I love that. I think everybody has uh, their own unique signature to them. And I think that uh, it's on you to sculpt it, to perfect it, to craft it out, to carve out what you want that signature to be. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, my old coach, um, Coach E, who I used to train with, talked always talked about getting in a creative mindset versus a competitive mindset. So if you're, you know, you're competing, and I think this is, it's a common concept because I've, he I've heard this um, in other places where they talk about if you were trying to make a better flip phone instead of imagining, you know, if Steve Jobs had been worried about competing with a flip phone instead of, inventing a smartphone we'd have better and better flip phones why are you competing with what's already there when you could when you could worry about creating something of your own yeah 
we're in uh you know competitive environments though um, yeah. I think there's a time and a place for competitiveness. I think that that fuels and feeds <laughs> you as well. Says the battle rap champion. <laughs> I mean, says the battle rap champ, says, you know, your own personal ego that fuels your creativity of wanting to be the best. Of, yeah. Of, 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 what's the word? Striving for excellence, trying to be great. You know what I mean? Wanting to put in more work than the next man, knowing that that's going to make the difference. All, of the, all the haters are elevator songs, right? Yeah. That's is, is, is that. Or just look at like the Kobe's. You, you, who wasn't with me shooting in the gym? I'm the first one in, last one out the gym. I'm, yeah. I'm putting in the most. But work. he's competing with himself. I mean, yeah, he's giving the side eye to lazy people, but you say compete with himself, but he said he's compete with the ghost of Michael Jordan. Yeah. Oh, he may not be competing with you, but there's something in there that's driving. Yeah. That okay, I get, I get you. I mean, and I, you know, I look up to people. You know, I, if I when I think about being great, I think about could I be an Orson Welles on the mic? Could I be a Langston Hughes? I don't think could I be a Charlemagne the God. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. that makes sense. If you're gonna compete, go all time great. Don't don't just side. Uh, but I feel like I am more productive. I always have that hunger, that fire. Like I gotta make the team, whatever that means to me. I feel like I'm more productive when I don't get caught up in, well, they're making more money and they're, they have longer eyelashes and they have a richer boyfriend and they have a bigger car. I mean, because at a certain point, and this kind of circles back to Diddy and not just Diddy, a lot of people in this industry, when is enough enough to Jeff Bezos? How many billions do you need? You know what I mean? What is what what is your definition of success? What is your definition of happiness? And what is and what is your creative zone? Is there does there have to be an enough level for people? Well, I don't know that it has to be enough. It has to be uh, I get I get, I get you maybe don't be greedy, don't be glutton, don't chase that, don't love the excess maybe. But I mean, is there ever really an enough if you don't if you have that fuel and that hunger for for more? To me, if I'm I'm not, I can't say if I'm, to me, if I, Dominique de Prima, get to Elon Musk money, I'm paying my workers. I'm not just going to try to hoard and stack and stack and hoard. That, it, I guess what it is, is a scarcity mentality that I'm talking about. Yeah. You want to have the hunger, you want to have the competitive drive, but when you get into a scarcity mentality where you're hoarding, that's where you get into that predatory capitalist mindset where there's never enough. I need more and more and more. I'm going to store it in here. I'm going to I'm not going to circulate that energy, creativity, those dollars. Maybe that's good for your bottom line, but I don't think it's good for the world, the greater good, your karma, your legacy. Hmm. Um I I don't I think we're meant to be here to be creative beings, to be um, elevating ourselves, to, to become people of better character. All of us make mistakes. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm far from that. All right. So when some crazy stuff come out about me, I don't want you shaking your head. But I'm just saying, like, shouldn't the goal be to elevate our character, not just to win by any means and stack the most chips from that perspective i get you you're right um i was i was still with you on the creativeness part though i was thinking yeah. that because i'm thinking about somebody like a like a prince who was making music to the day he died it's gonna make me stevie wonder gonna make music to the day they die and i think yeah. that that hunger for more a healthy hunger for more isn't a bad thing. Yeah, I think in the creative context that makes sense. I think about my mom who had Parkinson's and she was in the nursing home, mm. couldn't walk, writing poems. Mm. She was writing them on napkins. She was writing them. We got her an iPad because she couldn't, you know, navigate the keyboard like she used to. And But she was writing poems. And I, you know, yeah. For the For those of us, I'm raising my hand. For those of us who are procrastinators... <laughs> That is uh, definitely an inspiration. But, yeah, thank you for that music. Miles Low Music is where we can find it, right? MilesLowMusic.com, Miles Low Music on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, or shoot, I'm here at KBLA, man. Call in. Call right. in. Yeah. 800 <laughs> Really start requesting Miles on every show. That would be dope. Okay, so new poll. 
more than half of Americans disapprove of Israel's war in Gaza. That is all Americans. I'm sure if you drill down to young Americans or black Americans, it's going to be more. 55% uh, disapprove. 36% approve. That's according to a new poll by Gallup. Um, And that is this month. They surveyed over 1,000 adults. They say the poll shows growing discontent with Israel's war. In other words, it's the, the trajectory is more and more people disapproving rather than the other way around. Um, a similar poll in November found 50% approved of the war, uh, Israel's actions in Gaza. Now it's down to 36. That's a precipitous drop. And I'm sure with this polling, we will continue to see the Biden administration shifting uh, accordingly. They did not veto um, the ceasefire, which was seen as a a bit of a policy movement because they've been the sole veto. Uh, they didn't vote for it, but they didn't stop it. That upset Netanyahu reportedly, and uh, he did not send a delegation to Washington. Boo-hoo and wah. Now, the question is, will we flex, will the Biden administration flex their um, our taxpayer dollars because we fund this. Our government is telling us we cannot afford Medicare for all, even though once established, it would save a tremendous amount of money in the cost of health care and many, many, many lives from people who cannot afford to get treatment now. Our government is telling we can't afford that, but we can afford to give billions every year to support the Israeli military. Guess what they have? They have free college, but we can't afford it. Um, That's foul. And I hope that the Biden administration will flex. Will flex. Um, In in ways that can actually change not just the narrative, but the policy. Allow aid in there, you know. Oh, they say we're on the brink of famine and famine is a designation. You have to be at some official level of people dying to get to famine. But make no mistake, people are dying of hunger right now, even though it's not designated as an official famine. And there's food. There are trucks waiting to go into Gaza while people are kids are dying of hunger. We need to, it's time for the United States to flex. We are the main sugar daddy of Netanyahu. And that's me and you. We, by we, I mean us, because it's our taxpayer dollars that are being used here. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's good to see that the American people have questions. Let me put it that way. It's good to see that the American people have questions. 809-20-1580. A lot to cover. Um, If you want to talk to me, I'd love to hear from you. But um, there's a lot of things that I would love to catch you up on. We've got a couple bodies now that have been pulled out of the river um, where that Francis Scott Key Bridge is in Baltimore. Um, Those, obviously, the recovery operations were suspended because they're worried about those divers. The water's cold. It's dark. There's all kinds of debris in it from the crash. But um, they have pulled out Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes and Dorlian Roniel Castillo Cabrera. Um, Six people in total were missing, which means four still still unaccounted for at this time in, in that massive tragedy. Hey, if you are a French fry lover like I am. <laughs> I am. I love French fries and I love, love, love those fake cauliflower buffalo wings. Yeah, I know they're not actually chicken, but um, there's a new study about fried foods. I know I'm not going to, I'm not going to harp on it, but we do need to face the music. Those of us who are addicted to crunchy, crispy treats. Um, and I'd love to hear from you all that straight ahead on KBLA Talk 1580. 
She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. On your period, sudden gushes happen without warning. But now you can say goodbye to stand up gush fears. Thanks to Always Ultra Thins with Rapid Dry Technology. It absorbs gushes two times faster than the leading store brand and gives you up to 100% leak free protection. Hello, clean and comfortable with Always Fear No Gush. The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer's suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes eight count packs. Have you fallen behind on your water and power bill? LADWP has made paying your past due bills even easier. Sign up anytime online for Level Pay to get set monthly bills that include past due amounts. Or check out the special extended payment arrangements of up to 48 months to help pay down your bill. Visit LADWP.com slash cares and sign up today. That's LADWP.com slash cares. The conversation continues right now, right now, right now with right now. Dominique DePrima on First Things First. And it does, and you're invited in, 809-20-1580, 809-20-1580. Love to hear from you today or any day. Of course, um, our final 30 minutes of the show, we'll be talking with Mayor Karen Bass, who will be joining us for mornings with the mayor. Top of that hour, we'll be talking with Judge Songhai Armstead and learning about some amazing resources uh, for folks who have been incarcerated, who um, have been justice involved in any way, your, yourself or your loved ones. It's a new department, Justice Care and Opportunities, and they have some great, great uh, resources and programs that you need to know about. I'm getting DMs here. Um, Tell Miles the song is straight up hot. He says, giving me some Humpty Hump vibes, but with but even more modern, and I really love it. That's coming from uh, Dutch Man <laughs> Park One. Um, so people loving you, and of course, um, Molly Bell's got great things to say about you, as usual, as well, Miles Low. So look, this massive study, I'm not going to go into all the details, but they're talking about the problem with deep fried foods like french fries chicken all that apparently it's worse when you use the, the same oil over and over again like they do in restaurants that's what they studied um apparently it um affects the, it could they're saying could affect the relationship between the gut uh, microbiome the brain and the eye um and could cause neurodegeneration uh which means this one study has led to um, the desire to have a study about the connection between reusing oil and eating fried foods and cognitive decline like Alzheimer's and such. Um, the authors of the study say that supplements like omega-3 fatty acids um, and uh, curcumin uh, could help lower the inflammation, liver inflammation, and nerve degeneration that happens as a result of this. So, um, yeah, I'm probably still going to eat French fries. You probably will too. 
But aside from the fact that we already know they could be carcinogenic, this new study uh, shows that they could be having some pretty serious impact on our gut health and our brain health. So yay, one more reason not to um, not to dip into the fries. The Georgia election interference case um, is back in court today, and he who shall not be named, the former president, number 45, his lawyers will argue that the whole case should be thrown out because, wait for it, his First Amendment rights are being violated. The core uh, political speech and expressive conduct alleged in this indictment against President Trump are protected from government regulation uh, and criminal prosecution by the state. Sounds like a stretch to me, but hey, it worked for Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. They were able to get that anti-slap motion and cover up their crimes against Black Lives Matter grassroots by saying that grassroots was impeding on their free speech. They didn't argue that they didn't steal the money or the platforms or self-deal. They didn't argue that. They just said, they just did the Trump move and said, oh, you're impeding on our free speech because our right to raise money is our free speech and therefore you're creating problems. I mean, it seems like the extreme, that extreme version of that argument would dismiss any criminal case, but um, they're going to try it. Um, they are going to try it and they are back in court today. So meanwhile, no matter what happens in Georgia, um, Stormy Daniels and them are going to be in court April 15th, tax day. Tax day will bring um, a little bit of taxation, at least of the psyche of the former president, because um, that's how that goes. It's starting April 15th, like it or not. Uh, we got Willie calling us from Palmdale. Good morning, Willie. Uh, good morning, Dominique. What's on your mind? No dead air, uh, Willie. Was, you got to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, you remember that movie with Tom Cruise, um, Minority Report? I did not see it, but lots of folks talk about it. Not a big Cruise um, fan, I guess. I don't hate him or anything. It's just not the first mo movie I rush out to see. But what about it? Well, they're supposed to have the uh, uh, Minority Report against crime. They get they can see crime coming from uh, a week before it happens. And I was just thinking, if they can do that, why don't they have a uh, minority report on the police shooting? So you're talking about being able to predict when police are yes. going to kill black people. Um, well, when you say they say they're going to have a minority report on crime, who is they? Uh, uh, I think I read it in the newspaper, but I think it came out in 2015. They, they uh, made that scientific report. Okay, let's see. Events ensue when John finds himself framed for a future murder. Predictive policing. Kind Predictive of policing. About. Right. I mean, that's, okay. Uh, yeah. And I think maybe what we might be talking about, too, though, is because doing a lot of AI work with the police now to kind of make what they're calling predictive policing. Well, I mean, Chief LAPD Chief um, Bratton thought he was doing a version of predicting policing, which is the so-called broken windows. You can tell because of other signs, i.e. you're in the hood, that there's more likely to be crime, which in New York has been more or less proven to be profiling, right? Racial. In other words, predictive policing oftentimes means codified profiling of black and Latino people. And I believe the same thing will happen with AI models, because if you look at what's happening with the, the facial recognition technology, the AI already cannot recognize black, Latino, um, Indian faces because of the bias that's built into the algorithm by the white folks that uh, programmed it. Yeah. I remember the young lady that was on the, on the show, uh, KBLA show, uh, who's the, uh, who's a scientist that went in to uh, to help out with that situation? Yeah, and she ended up being fired, or sh she resigned, or something. Uh, yeah, because she's uh, an I, Ethiopian I uh, engineer. 
Yeah, she ended up, uh, I think she actually stepped down. She might have been fired. I can't remember. But it was all about her raising objections over the racial bias that is programmed into a lot of AI. Um, so I'm not sure how that how that plays out. But um, I don't and I really don't know how it would play out in terms of predicting the murders of people by police. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because if the if the algorithm is skewed in favor of whiteness, how does that impact I mean, that cr- prediction? Yeah, because it says crime is crime. Ah, it sounds like that's true, but th- we know that's not true because look at how things play out in the American justice system. Oh. Look at how it plays out with the death penalty. One of the reasons why... Who I was arguing with a friend last night. Yeah, I'm voting for George Gascon and proud to do it. And one of the main reasons is the death penalty, which is racially biased against black people, against Latino people. And there are mountains of data to prove that. We've got news, traffic, and sports right now. Then the conversation continues on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, forward. includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. Power. Thank you for sharing a part of your Thursday with us here on the Black Information Network. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest. New black box data recorder evidence shows the pilot of that cargo ship that crashed into a major Baltimore bridge called for help. The pilot radioed for a tugboat help and reported a power loss minutes before crashing into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor. President Joe Biden will be joined by former Presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama for a fundraiser tonight at Radio City Music Hall in Manhattan. President Biden is out to raise millions of dollars for his re-election campaign. The centerpiece of tonight's event is what's being called an armchair conversation with President Biden and former President Clinton and Obama, moderated by late-night talk show host Stephen Colbert. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Need an accident attorney by your side? All you got to do is call the accident guys. Injured in a car accident or at work? The accident guys have helped over 5,000 injured clients with an impressive winning record. Is this, is this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. The Lakers won their fifth straight, a 12-point win last night at Memphis. Rui Hachimura dropped a career-high seven three-pointers. He finished with 32 points. Kawhi Leonard made a clutch block just before the final buzzer to help the Clippers hold on for a one-point win at Philadelphia. Paul George had 22. One of the roads to the NCAA Men's Basketball Final Four goes through L.A. The West Regional Semifinals are today at Crypto.com. Arizona and Clemson tip off at 4 p.m., followed by North Carolina and Alabama at 6.30. Baseball is back. It's opening day today for the Dodgers and Angels. The Angels are in Baltimore. The Dodgers are at home against St. Louis. Only two black managers among Major League Baseball's 30 teams. Both are right here in Southern California. Ron Washington is in his first year with the Angels. This is season number nine for Dave Roberts with the Dodgers. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. Helping to broaden your political and moral imagination with our 2024 climate justice campaign. We're KBLA Talk 1580. Imagine with me here for a minute the most beautiful panoramic setting. Maybe it's an endless ocean, waves crashing on a beach, or a crystal clear mountain lake, peaceful and quiet. Or maybe it's just little kids playing in the park down the street. Wherever your imagination takes you, now imagine, right smack in the middle of this perfect picture, a piece of litter. Just one piece right there in the middle of it all. Doesn't exactly fit, does it? In fact, even though it's just one piece, now it's all you can see. That one piece ruins everything. And that's the thing about litter. It doesn't take much to ruin everything. One thing's for sure, it simply does not belong anywhere in California. So here's the good news. If we work together, we will change it. We don't have to let litter, even just one piece, ruin your perfect picture. Not anymore, not ever again. Clean California, zero litter is the goal. 
Brought to you by Caltrans and CleanCA.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no. I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. The Climate 360 Smart Bed actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. 94% of Sleep Number Smart Sleepers report better sleep. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now save $1,000 on our most popular Sleep Number Smart Bed and Saturday. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. To find a store near you, visit sleepnumber.com. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. Black. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. Hey. Hey. Uh, apparently, um, we we did forget about another hip hop, um, you know, entrepreneur, um, Russell Simmons, getting served on Monday in Bali. Got served with uh, papers in a defamation lawsuit. This is him being sued by Drew Dixon. It's not the same as having the feds raid your place. This is a private individual who is um, suing him, according to The Root. Um, she filed a lawsuit. Uh, she is alleging defamation, which is the same thing that Donald Trump uh, got, you know, found liable for, one of the things, against E. Jean Carroll. Um, but he, of course, is denying those allegations. But he did get served papers Monday in Bali. So... You know, back to our earlier conversation about the takedowns. Most people are not focusing on that, but it is in progress. Um, I, Donald Trump, as I said, they're in court. They're arguing that his he should be able to, the whole Georgia case should be dismissed because it's a violation of his free speech. The Stormy Daniels um, payoff of a porn star case Davis was talking about it on his show yesterday, saying it is the, um, the the weakest case. And I've heard that on CNN. I've heard it on MSNBC. It is what we call conventional wisdom by now. But I also heard a really good argument that it's not the weakest case in the sense that it's easy to understand it. And a conviction still would bring jail time. They're still felonies. True, it's not a giant RICO racketeering case, but as a presidential candidate, I don't think you want to be convicted of a felony while you're on the campaign trail, not even Trump. And sure, he'll raise money off of it, but I do think it makes a difference. In f and that's not just me making stuff up. Recent polling has showed that even Republican voters would be influenced by an actual conviction. Not all of them. There are people that, like Trump said, he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and get away with it. But there are enough people to make a difference and possibly tank his candidacy should he be convicted. Uh, not to mention, for some of us, it would just be satisfying. Because I really thought he was going to get convicted around the Trump University. How many criminal cases ago was that? 
he paid a small a small amount and kept it pushing. Um, so, again, I don't think it's that weak. I'm not a lawyer, but paying off a sex worker to um, to save your campaign because remember he had the access Hollywood grab them by the uh, privates revelation that had just dropped. It's shortly before election day. The last thing they needed was Stormy Daniels with receipts. So they paid her off. They paid her off. And that, you know, you're talking felonies here. And also, because it's not international finance, it's pretty easy to understand for a jury. You try to quiet down the porn star. Like any person that's trying to keep a dalliance from their husband or wife. Dalliance, an entanglement. It's called duggery. A sideshow. Most anyone can understand that. Paid out money. Because we didn't want this coming out. In this case, the wife is the American people. The, the voters. I don't think it's that weak. And I love to see it. <laughs> this sports writer named Rick Riley apparently went golfing a bunch of times with Trump. And he's written a book about how much Trump cheats <laughs> at golf. I think it's funny, but I also think it's very instructive about how this dude operates. Apparently, I don't play golf. Do you play golf, Miles? No, oh, man, not at all. Not at all. Okay, me neither. I've been to golf tournaments because they were charity fundraisers and I was, you know, just supporting them or whatever. But apparently there's a trust factor with golfers because when you hit the ball, n no one's there. And everyone assumes that no one moves their ball before anyone else can see where it landed and whether or not it was a good shot. Apparently one of the tricks that Trump has is that he will give himself a golf cart that is faster than anyone else's golf cart. He's like a he's got like the race car of golf carts. And then he'll give everyone these regular slow ass carts. And then he'll race ahead and move his ball closer to the hole to make it seem like he's got a better shot. Um, the sports writer said, uh, this guy, Riley, Rick Riley said one time he was playing and there was an actual splash of the ball going into the water. Everyone saw the splash, but when they got up to the hole, the ball was right near the hole. And when he was questioned about it, he said something like it must've bounced. <laughs> it, it must've been a ricochet or something like that. Like the ball ricocheted off the water and landed right here. <laughs> you look at that. I mean, I, the, one of the reasons I think that's so informative is because not only is he cheating, he's planning to cheat. He got a whole special golf cart so he could leave you in the dust and move the ball. You know what I mean? He's not improvising. He is a studied cheater. They also say when he opens a new golf course, he'll go out there and play by himself and then declare himself the winner of the inaugural championship of whatever that golf course is. That is, uh, he points out he's never won a championship at a course he doesn't own and operate. Um, when he plays in Tahoe, where there are rules, judges, and cameras, he's never even finished in the top half. He wins when anybody who disagrees that he has won is out of the club. Now, let's apply that to the big lie, right? Not only is this guy used to um, lying about his wins and lying about his losses. He clearly has some kind of losing allergy. He doesn't like to be described as a loser. That's why he describes everyone else as a loser. And he is willing to do things to make, um, to plan ahead and cheat. Yeah. Oh no, this is what he said. <laughs> the time when it splashed, when everyone saw the splash in the water, he said, "It." they said, uh, one of the players said, what the F, Donald? And he said, it must have been the tide. <laughs> Look. 
<laughs> like a tide is going to wash your ball exactly where you wanted it to go. It's, it's you know, laugh to keep from crying funny, but I also think it's um, very instructive when we look at how this dude is playing the election, how he's playing the um, big lie and what he's doing leading up to uh, 2024, how he's dealing with these multiple cases, felony cases uh, that he's currently facing. Oh, he's trying to cheat. He's trying to strong arm. He's lying. He's trying to witness intimidate, smear judges. All of that is a illegal version of the faster golf cart. And, um, I don't see, that's why I do, I am starting to think it really is a cult. Because when someone cheats on you in cards or Monopoly or, or golf, you, we know it. We've known it since we were a little kid, cheater. But all of these people are convincing themselves that this lying liar is not lying. To me, that has to be a cult. Or... You're making a calculated, a cynical calculation that it's worth it to you to align yourself with a person of no character, multiple care, multiple um, felonies, multiple sexual assaults, because you want what you want. You want Roe v. Wade overturned. You're scared of black people and you want to make sure that we are put in our place, et cetera, et cetera. So you're making a calculation just as Trump made a calculation with his turbocharged golf cart. You're saying he's a liar, he's a cheater, but I don't care because the um, means is worth it to get to the end. It, 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 it has to be that. 809-201580. If you want to talk about it, oh, man, man, man. Um, yeah, the women... Uh, um, in the NCAA tournament facing racist attacks in Utah. Share that when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Have you fallen behind on your water and power bill? LADWP has made paying your past due bills even easier. Sign up anytime online for Level Pay to get set monthly bills that include past due amounts. Or check out the special extended payment arrangements of up to 48 months to help pay down your bill. Visit LADWP.com slash cares and sign up today. That's LADWP.com slash cares. Tips to help improve your credit score in 2024. Establishing credit is an important key to achieving financial health, but building a credit history from scratch can feel challenging since you need credit to build credit. First, what does it mean to build credit? All consumers have a score between 300 and 850. You want your score to be as high as possible as lenders look at your credit score to make loan and credit decisions. A good credit score shows you have a track record of borrowing money responsibly. Remember, it's never too late to build or rebuild your credit. This segment is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. Paid for by government.com. Did you know the United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time? Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% .9 pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite 
morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique De Prima right now. Right now. Uh, right now, 809-201-1580, uh, the number if you would like to um, call in. A shout out to Quamel. Uh, I had not seen this story, Quamel. I appreciate you sharing it uh, with me. Uh, Joe Lieberman um, has died. The first, uh, the first ever Jewish vice presidential nominee from a major party. Um, he um, died at the age of 82. He was a senator from Connecticut, um, passed away apparently yesterday due to complications from a fall in New York. He died at home with his family by his side. Um, he was the VP nominee for Al Gore um, back in 2000. That that skullduggery, that shady election where Gore should have fought for uh, his win, his legitimate win, the beginning of the downhill slide of uh, the folks who win the popular vote losing the White House. Um, he was an, a so-called independent um, Democrat in that he was very conservative on on certain issues. And um, Tavis being our historian in chief, I'm sure he'll have a lot to say about um, about Joe Lieberman um, passing. And so I thank you, uh, Kwamel, and thanks to our folks in the YouTube chat for drawing my attention to that story which I had not seen and this thing about falling it's really serious business it is one of the leading causes of death for elders um, and um, one of the ways you know we protect against that is by by being strong by by lifting the strength training and, and protein and of course you know the um, this is something that we don't hear emphasized enough. We we hear about being cute and fit and having a, you know, hot girl, hot boy body for the summer when you're younger. But even all the way people, I, I told you guys about this recent studies, even people in their 80s and 90s, um, if they start lifting weights at that age, they can build muscle and uh, help prevent falls, um, which can lead to folks dying. I mean, it, it, it's something that w wouldn't kill you when you were younger. And, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I think this also the death of Lieberman, who's such a, an interesting figure in American politics is going to create a lot of conversation, um, that is super relevant right now in this cycle that we're in this very strange, election cycle that we're in right now let's go to paul calling us from la Good morning paul how many how are you doing i'm blessed how are you i'm doing great um uh -oh. there's a couple of important stories that actually um days that the media really kind of didn't um hit on just in regards to people that were in the circle um of people uh, around Trump um, overthrowing of the government. Okay. Yeah, and you know. Fibian. Say I'm again. Sorry, go ahead. No, say again. Oh, Pat, Pat Philbian um, is actually one of the ex White House um, lawyers and counsels that was in the room, and he recently. Um, when you say in the room, you're talking about. Um, in the room with Trump on January 6th? Hmm. Seems like we've lost Paul. But I, I, you know, I think that's, um, that is one of the things that is most frustrating for me about January 6th is the way the, um, so many of the people at the top, whether they be in Congress, in the Senate, um, the enablers, um, and Paul, I, I think we've lost you, so please call back to make your point, unless it was, you know, <laughs> unless it was the man disconnecting your call, but how they seem to skate, you know, and while I'm happy to see the Proud Boys go to jail for practicing white supremacy and the attempted overthrow of our government, I would like to see the kingpins also be held 
king and queen pins also be held criminally accountable for the attempted coup on our government, which we are still paying a price for. It's not too late to call me, 809-20-1580. I'm Dominique DePrima for Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud, loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a We've lot, got to, a talk lot to talk about. Race, culture wars, political turf battles, criminal justice and injustice, the courts. These are the conversations you won't hear elsewhere. My guests are leading journalists, celebrities and sports figures, elected leaders and influencers. They aren't afraid to get into it and say the quiet part out loud. With Ariva Martin in real time, your commute just became the most engaging part of your day. Tune in weekdays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. or find us on YouTube. Ariva Martin in real time. When you want it straight, no chaser. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment. LA's 99 neighborhood councils form the grassroots level of the Los Angeles city government. The system was created to connect LA's diverse communities to City Hall. While neighborhood council board members are volunteers, they are also public officials elected to office by the members of their community. Neighborhood councils advocate on issues like homelessness, housing, land use, emergency preparedness, public safety, parks, transportation, and sustainability. They also provide local expertise on the delivery of city services to their various communities. Neighborhood councils are open to participation by anyone who is a part of the fabric of daily life in said community. This includes those who live, work, or own property, or a business. If you are interested in stepping up to join your local neighborhood council, visit www.empowerla.org. That's empowerla.org. It's time to think globally, but act locally. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Watch out! The galaxy is safe once again. In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're unapologetically progressive, and we don't black down. Okay, so they're arguing it out in the uh, chat about uh, he who shall not be named the 45th president. Um, and, you know, whether or not we should be supporting him. The one holistic view, get off Trump's jock. Molly Bell says no case for Trump has really stuck. He should be under the jail yet, and still he's doing okay. Um, Rick James should break out with cold-blooded. Um, Quamel says maybe you should get off Trump's jock. Someone holistic has no business being a Trump supporter. Uh, and uh, oh, Pauly says I guess the reason he he he's um, his call dropped is because his phone's been tripping lately. Um, and then one holistic says, uh, I'll skip ahead through the comments. He says, be real with our people, Dominique, and chill with the agenda, democratic being driven by you. Um, well, I am a Democrat. I represent the progressive wing of the democratic party. That means I don't agree with all of what they do. I am a registered Democrat and I am a proud progressive. But I'm an independent-minded woman. I am not a shill, nor am I on the payroll for the Democratic Party, nor am I an official correspondent of any agenda. Beyond the fact that everyone has an agenda. Every human has an agenda. Mine is the uplifting of black people, justice for us, reparations. Mine is, you know, the uplifting of children, seniors, and low-income people, a just equitable world, a beautiful, creative, humanitarian world, which is not a pipe dream. Yeah. Yeah. I have rose colored glasses, rainbows and, 
in, 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 in unicorns and crystals and flowers. But why not? Why not choose good? Why not choose feeding children, which is not what the Republican Party has chosen. They have chosen to cut aid to families. They are moving to cut Social Security. So a vote for Trump is a vote to starve your granny. Literally. They have voted against the child tax credit repeatedly, which means they have thrown 4 million American babies into hunger and poverty. That is my agenda. Feed those babies. Yes, women's empowerment. If that happens to be more, uh, you know, native to the Democratic Party, so be it. Maybe that's why I chose the Democratic Party. They didn't choose me. Um, and I love it when people say that. Be real with our people. They don't get much realer than me. The streets know. I'll tell you, you might not like what you hear, but it is the truth as I know it. And it is backed up with evidence and research. I talk a lot of smack, but trust me, it is factual smackual. Okay? You might not like it. Most people don't like the truth when it interferes with their agenda. I don't know what your agenda is. But if you are a supporter of the 45th president, clearly it's not about the greater good. <laughs> so get on your turbocharged golf course. And <laughs> Well, never mind. Uh, yeah. We've got news, traffic, and sports, and more on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thank you for sharing the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor. President Joe Biden will be joined by former Presidents Bill Clinton.